Hey guys, I'm Evan Ferguson with the Cunis Auto Group. Welcome to Cunis Car Combos. Today we're going to be driving around with recently hired head football coach of Delvin Darien High School, Mark Kibler, in a 2019 Ford F-150 Raptor. All right guys, I'm here with recently hired head football coach at Delvin Darien High School, Mark Kibler. Coach, how you doing today? Good, doing awesome. Yeah. Um, it's cold out today, but you know, it's expected in March, I guess. Yep. It is definitely not pleasant when you get, you know, football weather when you're hoping for spring. <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. So first question, how does it feel to be hired to be the head football coach at your alma mater? Um, feels surreal. Um, it's only been a couple days now, so still not getting much sleep because I can't stop thinking at night and, and thinking of all the things we got to do and, and got to execute and putting the vision in. So the feeling is awesome. The family's really excited. The community's really excited. So that feels good to have all the support of everybody around me. Um, I think the buy-in's going to happen real fast um, with how much, you know, I've been hearing from other people and talking to other people. But it's it's been a crazy ride. It's been a great feeling and I, I don't expect it to slow down anytime soon, but you know, eventually we'll, we'll hit the ground running. How long have you been coaching football? Uh, and you know, what kind of what kind of things, you know, how, what made you get into football? Yeah, so I started coaching in 2012 um, at Delavan, which seems like forever ago now, but yeah, I, I basically I played football most of my life and I knew I'd probably get back in the game at some point. I just didn't know when or where, and I got the opportunity in 2012 to coach under um, Steve Tenagan at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just grew from there. Um, it's always been a huge passion of mine. It's something that's always talked about in the house. Like if you ask my wife, hey, you know, what does Mark love the most in the world? And she's not gonna say her name, she's gonna say football, even though I would say <laughs> her name. It's always the running joke that football was football is my first love and it's just something I could never just let go. It's I knew it'd always be a part of me. Um, I got kids now that are coming up into football, they're young and they're starting to love it just as much as I do, so it's 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 been fun. How uh, how many years away before you think you're coaching them? Um, so my youngest is five, my youngest son is five, and my oldest son is nine. So we're, well, if you do the math, probably about six, seven years away till they're coming up. And then my youngest one, we're about you know, 12, 13, 11 years away from him being on the team. I did coach my nine-year-old son in flight football last year, and we won the the uh, like district title or whatever, so that was fun. Oh, nice. Congrats, yeah. congrats on that. Hopefully that's a sign for things to come for Delavan. Yes. It's obviously a little different than flight football, but, you know, yes, absolutely. we'll take what we can get. Um, and, yeah, also a fun fact, uh, Coach Kibler used to be my assistant head coach or assistant coach when uh, when I was in high school, so definitely, definitely proud to see that he's moved up as much as he has. And so earlier you mentioned a couple of words like, uh, you know, your, your vision for the team and, uh, you know, uh, the players buying in pretty soon and everything. So that leads me to my next question. Uh, what sort of approaches and, you know, coaching philosophies, you know, what, what is your, what is your vision for DDHS football? Um, right away, the vision is, is to get everybody all in, right? Um, there's, football's a different sport than all the other sports. There's a lot more time that needs to be put in the off season. Not saying there's not a lot of time that doesn't need to be put off season about the other sports, but there's a lot of uh, time that's got to be put in the weight room and things like that and building the culture through the weight room, building the culture on the field um, and through winning like that, that's going to be the first objective. Um, I'm going to build a coaching staff that is a lot of a DHS alumni, a lot of good you know, ex-players and stuff like that that are going to come in and we're just going to bring a new energy and a new attitude and I can tell the players are already feeling it, feeling the energy and the attitude and it's going to get them to you know, kind of understand what we're trying to do, understand the process and it's, it's gonna happen fast. Um, the buy-in's gotta be happening all around though, not just the coaching staff, but the players as well for us to succeed. Yeah, I think any any player, former player, or any coach uh, would definitely agree that no matter no matter how talented you have of a group of guys, uh, you know, you, you usually don't go very far if, you know, yeah, if there's no, yeah. no buy-in. And, and it, it doesn't even matter if, you know, the coach is always in the right or, you know, if he, has yep. the best strategy or game plan, but you know, if you don't buy in at all, then you're you're 100 percent destined to fail. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the ultimate team game, and there's 11 guys on the field at a time, and that's a lot, right? And they're all working towards one goal. And we all have to be one machine, grinding it out towards one thing at a, you know one step at a time, 
And if there's not buy-in and there's not everybody working cohesively together, you know, teams are going to struggle. They're not going to win as many games as they should, right? Winning four or five games isn't acceptable um, to me. we got to be winning and in in pushing conference championships and making the playoffs every year. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, everybody has to be ready to go and all in. Absolutely. And you all, like you mentioned, uh, all other DDHS alumni are going to be joining your staff and everything. Uh, one of them uh, that a lot of people might know is Mike Moyer, who mm -hmm. also is a salesman at Cunis Elkhorn Chevy, so if you ever need a vehicle, go check him out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys have been buddies for about as long as I've known you, and it goes yeah. back even further than that, and you guys have always coached together, so uh, what does it mean for you to continue having him on your staff, and you know, what, what sort of things does he bring to the table as well? Um, yeah, he's he's a very reliable person. We have coached in the past, and, and we started out under the same head coach, and, and we've kind of grown together. Um, He's one of the best D-backs coaches that I've ever met. One of the best D-backs coaches in the area, I can say without a doubt. So bringing him on staff is a no-brainer. Um, the kids like him, you know, they, they love him. They like, you know, rallying around him and he can get players to play for him. And just that alone, the D-backs room is going to have a different kind of swagger right away when he comes into the, into our, onto the staff, I should say. Um, he'll be a big part of everything moving forward and he's 100% behind my vision. Um, and I trust him fully, so I'm really excited to have him back. Yeah, no, that's that's phenomenal. I was just, I was actually just at the Elkhorn Chevy store last week and uh, was chatting with him about it. And he was, uh, it was the day before the news got broke, but he felt very confident that you were going to get the job. And he was, could not be more excited. And you're completely right. He really does have that, you know, cornerback and safety personality. You know, like he's just, he's got he's got the swagger, but he's got a little bit of the attitude to go along mm -hmm. with it. But he has you know the the knowledge and you know the skill set to that always backed it up and everything and it was just he was another guy i, I just loved being around back in back when i was a kid just because yeah. you know it just was that that intensity that it brings is just it's contagious yeah he, he's got a good personality when it comes to football and he, he gets players to rally behind him and they want to play for him and that's the biggest thing for me so yeah absolutely so who would you say has had the biggest influence on your coaching career? Um, I, I don't know if I could name just one person. I think there's a lot of a lot of people. I think Coach Moore is actually one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes, you know, Steve Tenhagen when I first came under him. I learned the most from him to start my coaching career. Um, and I learned a lot from Saint when he came along. And then when I moved on to Clinton, um, Stanford, I learned a ton from him as well. The guy was really detailed, really organized, and it, it helped me push me to the next level. Is that Jacob Stanford? Yep. Okay. I, I yeah, I don't know if I, if anybody ever said that, but he was actually our like our summer school teacher too back in uh, when we were coming into our freshman year of high yep. school. So yep. that's a that's a small that's a yep. small world. Yeah, we coached together at Clinton for the year. He brought me on staff when he was head coach there to be the OC. And uh, yeah, he's very detailed, very organized, and very passionate. So it was, I learned a lot from him too, as well. And it's pretty funny, like going from coaching with Coach Coach Saint Arnold to him, because they're ba they're basically twins. Yeah, yeah, they did have the same kind of energy, so that transition was a little was pretty easy. Um, they're very vocal, they're very loud, very passionate. So it was fun. Learned a lot from Saint. Saint always wears his emotions on his sleeve. The, I'm yep. a little bit more reserved, but you know, you always got to have that yin and yang sometimes with the coaching staff. You know? Certain coaches do things a certain way, certain coaches do things the other way, and they just all mesh together, you know, when you get it done right. So. Well, see, and that's, I think that's another thing that a lot of us liked about you when we were growing up was, uh, although we knew you were a little bit more reserved, uh, but, like, when you had something to say, like, it was, it was time to listen up, and there were a lot of, a lot of quotes, a lot of speeches that you had that still to this day uh, resonate with me that I, I, th I think you actually are one of, like, my most quoted coaches because one of the things you said that still sticks with me to this day is uh we were talking about route running and everything and you once said guys if you don't know like if you get up to the line of scrimmage and you don't know what route you're gonna run just run something but run it at 100 it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you do something wrong but do it at 100 because the the least you can do is at least take the cornerback that's guarding you somewhere else and you know away from you know the other ball carriers confidence is everything with just everything, not just sports, but in life. Like, if you're gonna do something, just do it 100%, all the time, every time, right? Yep. Um, you can't be afraid to fail. It's Absolutely. gonna happen, Think bad things are gonna happen, but it's, as long as you're giving your all, you have nothing to be ashamed of. So where do you see DDHS, fo D where do you see DDHS football in the next five years or so? Um, 
I, I, I have very high expectations. I expect us to be competing for conference championships every year starting this year. So hopefully by year five, we've got a few of those under our belt. And then, you know, making playoffs and getting playoff wins. I think that was the biggest thing. The most fun I had was what that was your senior year when you won that playoff game. In yeah, Aurora. that, that was, was a big one. Yeah, that was a big, that was a big night for us. And I want that back. I want to get that, that feeling, that taste back and, and winning playoff games and going on the road and beating teams you're not supposed to beat and all mm -hmm. that stuff and, and just putting on a show. And, and with wins comes, you know, more and more good things with it, right? More and more kids are going to come to the program. More and more people are going to want to be around it. It's going to grow fast. So I fully expect to be, you know, winning conference titles by year five. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great uh, goal to set and everything. You know, like there's there's nothing wrong for there's nothing wrong with swinging for the fences. You know, shooting for the stars. And it's it's yeah. nice that this community and this school is going to have a coach that isn't going to accept anything less than that. So that's uh, that's really awesome to hear. All right, so if you're if you're up for it, we're gonna do a little speed, you know, lightning round. Yeah. So, all right, just gonna rattle off a few questions here. All right, favorite football movie? Um, Remember the Titans. Good one. Uh, favorite football memory of yours? Um, my favorite football memory is probably the last senior game. Um, when we just did, we didn't leave the field for like the for like a half hour, and they had to turn the lights off on us to get us up to be able to go in the locker room and take showers. Um, that one always pops to mind. Uh, favorite football team? Uh, Green Bay Packers. Favorite football player? Charles Woodson. Favorite football coach that you played under? Ooh, that's a good one. Probably Bob Beal. He was my first ever coach when the Delvin Red Devils still existed. Um, now that the junior comments, but um, he really got me. I already loved football before I got into it, but he really pushed it for me. So it was for life basically after I met him. Okay. And the last one, kind of a random one. What was your favorite song to listen to before football games? Or type um, of music at least? Oof. I, I, I preferred rap music before games. Um, a lot of TI, um, yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> G Unit stuff back in like 2004, 2005. That that kind of rap music was probably my favorite. So those two before games. All right, another random one that just came to came to my head. In your opinion, what year was the best year for Madden? Ooh, Madden. Um, what do you got? Man, that's a tough question. I'm gonna have to go 2000 and. What is it? Which one's a shot? Probably 2005. Probably 2005. That's that's a good one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're uh, back back at the school. Time to time to wrap up this car combo. Um, so as your closing statement, you know, call to action or whatever. What's what's like the overall message that you would like parents of the school, parents who are in the community but don't send their kids here. You know, what's what's something you would like parents to know going forward about Coach Mark Kibler? Yeah, so the program's gonna be very well organized and very detailed. Um, my big thing when I got the job was I wanted to give the program back to the community and back to the alumni. So I'm gonna put a lot of my time in, not just the kids, but the parents and the community and you know all the, the players that have moved on and, and stuff like that. So I want, I want this to be a communal thing. I, I wanna make sure that everyone's taken care of and that the communication is um, top notch with the parents and everybody involved, so. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great to know. And I guess one other last question, if you know off the top of your head, if not, fine, because you know, you just you just started. Do, uh, do you know any specific dates for, you know, uh, football fundraisers coming up or, you know, at least like when, when you know, if comic cards are still a thing, are those going to be start, start being sold yeah, anytime? Yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of plans. I can't really tell you the dates on anything quite yet. We're still kind of working through that, but um, there will be a bunch of fundraiser stuff. We'll do a lot of stuff with the community and the band show and things like that. So it'll be fun. Okay. Well. That wraps it up for this car combo. Uh, once again, recently hired DDHS football coach Mark Kibler. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks, yeah. coach. Thanks. Take care.